It's a good day and this is your favorite medical channel, Medicosis Perfectionalis, continuing our discussion on bleeding and coagulation disorders. We have started talking about fibrinolysis before. Today we'll talk about plasminogen activator inhibitor or PAI. We have PAI1, which comes from the endothelium and adipose tissue, as well as PAI2, which comes from the placenta. With that being said, now let's get started. As you know, hemostasis is the process of prevention of blood loss or stopping the bleeding and it consists of many steps, vasoconstriction, temporary plate plug, coagulation and fibrolysis. We are here. Plasminogen into plasmin thanks to TPA, but not only TPA, also we have urokinase, factors 12, 11 and plasma kilocrine. So, plasminogen into plasmin will convert fibrin into fibrin degradation products and this same plasmin will convert stabilized fibrin into the D-dimer. Fine. We can inhibit the TPA at this level and we can inhibit plasmin at this level. Who inhibits TPA at this level? The topic of today's video, plasminogen activator inhibitor. Plasminogen activator is just a fancy term for TPA because TPA is the plasminogen activator par excellence. So when you say plasminogen activator inhibitor, it just means TPA inhibitor. Okay, cool. So we can inhibit it at this level or at this level. Now let's talk about plasminogen activator inhibitor, which inhibits this process at this freaking level. I have 50 hematology cases for you. They cover topics such as bleeding and coagulation disorders. So make sure to go to patreon.com forward slash medicosis and get these cases. They are only available for 30 students. Then the price will increase. Thank you so much in advance. Take your education to the next level and get all of the bleeding questions out of your way. So here's the complete story of fibrinolysis. You have the intrinsic or the extrinsic coagulation pathway. Prothrombin into thrombin, fibrogen into fibrin. Now we have the clot. Stabilize the clot by factor 13. Now we have stabilized fibrin. Now let's destroy the clot and restore the function and restore the normal blood flow. We need plasmin, but plasmin is present in an inactive precursor form called plasminogen. Nice. We need urokinase and TPA to activate plasminogen into plasmin. Now, plasmin will degrade fiber into fiber and degradation product. It will degrade fibrin, the stabilized one, into D-dimer, and it will degrade fibrinogen into fibrinogen degradation products. It will also digest factors 5 and 8, as well as prothrombin and factor 12. This is just awesome. Think of thrombin and plasmin as enemies. Thrombin wants blood coagulation. Plasmin wants to destroy the clot and restore the blood flow. Both are proteases, by the way, which are enzymes that destroy or digest proteins. Thrombin is the hero of coagulation. Plasmin is the hero of fibrolysis, and they are enemies. Nice. So, how does plasmin know that this protein is the fibrin and it will destroy only the fibrin? Meanwhile, it doesn't destroy proteins in your muscle, for example. And here is the secret. The secret is in the receptor. It has a receptor. That's how it can tell the difference between fibrin and other proteins in your body. Cool. Recall that when plasmin destroys the fibrin, it produces fibrin degradation products or FDPs. However, when it breaks down the stabilized covalently cross-linked fibrin, it produces D-dimer. How does it know fibrin? Thanks to the lysine binding site because there is a lysine on the fibrin. As I've told you in my previous videos, there are two types of plasminogen activators. We have the tissue type or TPA, urokinase type or UPA. Both of them are plasminogen activator. That's why the topic of today is plasminogen activator inhibitor, which is going to inhibit both of these. And I've talked about the TPA drugs before and their clinical uses and side effects in previous videos. I've also talked about the absolute and relative contraindications to TPA use. That's why you need to subscribe, guys. Because fibrinolysis is a very important step, we should regulate it. Because power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. We have three regulators. Plasminogen activator inhibitors, alpha-2 antiplasmin, and thrombin-activatable fibrinolysis inhibitor. 
plasminogen into plasmin thanks to TPN urokinase, who inhibits the step plasminogen activator inhibitor 1 and 2. Then we have plasmin, who inhibits the step alpha 2 antiplasmin alpha 2 macroglobin. Then plasmin degrades fibrin into fibrin degradation products and the stabilized fibrin into D-dimer, who inhibits the step thrombin activatable fibrinolysis inhibitor. Remember when I told you that thrombin and plasmin are enemies? Yes, indeed. So here are the three regulatory mechanisms of fibrinolysis. First, plasminogen activator inhibitor, which inhibits the activators of plasminogen, which are TPA and urokinase, UPA. Alpha-2 antiplasmin inhibits the free plasmin. Any free plasmin will bind to alpha-2 antiplasmin to its demise. Thrombin activated fibrinolysis inhibitors, or TAFI, they cleave the end terminus of fibrin, which will lead to decreased fibrinolysis because this end terminus is where plasmin would work. When you cleave the end terminus, plasmin has nothing to work on. It's like taking the case documents from the lawyer. So here's the whole story, plasminogen into plasmin thanks to thrombin, TPA, urokinase, etc. Who inhibits the step? Plasminogen activator inhibitor. Nice. Then we have plasmin, who inhibits it? Alpha-2 antiplasmin, alpha-2 macroglobin. Then we have fibrin to fibrin degradation products and the stabilized fibrin to D-dimer, who inhibits this step? Thrombin activatable fibrinolysis inhibitor and they need thrombin to be because it's called thrombin activatable, so thrombin activates this compound. The two types of plasminogen activator inhibitor are 1 and 2. 1 is secreted by the endothelium as well as adipose tissue. 2 is secreted by the placenta. Therefore, in pregnancy, the amount of PAI2 is going to increase. I'm less interested in facts. I'm more interested in helping patients. So let's go to the clinical pearls. Plasminogen activator inhibitor deficiency will lead to you have a deficiency of the inhibitor, which means TPA is left free. When TPA is free, it will cause fibrolysis, clot lysis, which will lead to bleeding. Or if you want to be sophisticated in front of your professor, say hemorrhagic diathesis, which just means a bleeding problem. Then we have increased PAI will lead to increased risk of thrombosis and atherosclerosis. Why increase risk of thrombosis? Think about it. If you have an increased inhibitor, you will have decreased TPA and you will have decreased fibrolysis, you are not going to lyse your clot. The clot will persist. You have an increased risk of thrombosis, which makes perfect sense. Cancers, obesity, metabolic syndrome can have increased PAI. That's why these diseases have increased risk of thrombosis. Angiotensin 2 increase the, the PAI1, plasminogen activator inhibitor 1, which will lead to increased risk of atherosclerosis. The condition of hard vessels. Thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe and hit the bell. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Get my notes and all of my cases on patreon.com forward slash medicosis. These cases are only available for, for my Patreon subscribers. They are not available on YouTube. Thank you for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfect Channels, where medicine makes perfect sense.